Hey, Ben Baxter here, back in the Angler's All Time studio. Today we're gonna tie up a salty snack for you called the Bonefish Bitters. All right, so I'm starting with a Gamakatsu SL11 3H size 8. First thing I'm gonna be tying on is some medium bead chain eyes in a gold color, and I'm using Power Thread 140 denier from Vivis in an olive. I'm gonna go ahead and start my thread. I don't wanna tie back too far on this cause we're literally only gonna tie in the eyes first and then we're gonna do a little whip finish, snip our thread off and actually glue, use some UV thick glue around our eyes, just to add a little bit of weight, give it kind of a little crustacean-y look to it. So I'm just doing some X wraps here. And because I'm pulling so hard, I'm really, I'm just holding on to my, my hook. Just could be mental for me, but that's just how I like to do it. Okay, got our eyes secured in. Do a quick whip finish. Cut our thread off. We're using, again, Loon UV fly finish in thick. This stuff is, just as it says, is very thick. So you don't have to worry about it running too much on you or you know, going from one side to the other when you apply it. Um, so you can be very deliberate on where you're putting it and for the most part, it's gonna wanna stay for you. Don't wanna over glue these, but you definitely wanna make sure you get a good solid coat around all of the bead chain and around the shank too, pretty close up to the eye too. This is a real, so on this fly, this is how it's gonna sit at the end. So it's it's right, gonna ride a hook point up, much like a lot of the carp flies out there. You can reference some of Daryl's videos if you'd like on some of the carp flies that he's tied up if you're looking for something like this on the freshwater side of things. And that looks pretty solid to me. You don't want too much of a bump here. Like I said, this is gonna be your bottom technically, so the hook is in, in the water is gonna be sitting like this. Um, I feel like I got pretty good coverage on this though, so I don't have to use my bodkin too much to get it all over everything. done a handful of these so you know once once you get get a good idea of what the end product is supposed to look like you can pretty much get it dialed in so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with my light using my ro rotation really helps to to keep that that glue where I wanted it at it's got a little bump in there but that's all right it's not the end of the world Again, we're still using our Vivas 130, or 140, sorry. Start our thread here. Snip that out. I'm gonna cover a little bit of this shank. There isn't really a whole lot of body to this, but I just feel more comfortable covering that shank, a little less flash in this fly off of that hook shank. So I'm gonna stay a little back, probably an eye's length behind all of that glue and the bead chains. And the first thing I'm gonna tie in is some silly legs. You can use any sort of rubber legs on this if you want a fancy color, uh, loco legs, anything like that will work for this particular fly. I'm gonna just take one strand 
of this. And this is the Olive Bard Nymph. Just taking one strand, I'm gonna fold it in thirds. And I'm just gonna tie these in right here. Just do one loose wrap, because these legs really like to, to roll on you. Sorry, I'm gonna put my hands right in your face. Again, just doing a couple loose wraps so I can really kind of keep those legs where I want them. Kind of guiding them, if you will. And I'm also pushing a little bit in, in, on some of these wraps just to keep those legs from spinning on me or going a different direction. Same, same idea as when I'm pulling on them and that's part of why I'm doing loose wraps first and then I hold those legs that that wrap is affecting in in the spot where I want them to and then I cinch that wrap down so there you go you can see those legs are kind of splayed out which is really what you want they don't have to be perfect this is Going to kind of be your stabilizer or, or landing gear for this particular fly. It just helps keep it um, upside down, if um, in this case, um, to keep the pattern sitting properly on the bottom. Next, I'm going to be using some Zelon. This is a ginger color, I believe the original olive color scheme called for just an olive, but I do kind of like to have a two tone fly here. Obviously, this kind of is a mix between the the gold and the bead chain, and uh, the olive and the rest of the fly. So it's a good kind of in between color. So I'm just taking inch, inch and a half bunch of of Zelon, and I'm just gonna fold this right over. The hook shank, if I can get it to work. There we go. I'm pinching that together and then I'm just tying that in as is. Just like so. And again, we're still gonna tie in some deer hair here, so you really wanna leave, make sure you leave plenty of space there because you still have to whip finish this fly as well. So this we're going to trim just underneath the point of the hook. That kind of fills in that, that gap there. Kind of will act as a, a little bit of a lift for the deer hair too. And lastly, we're going to be tying in some all-purpose deer hair. I'm going to use my trusty old TMCO hair stacker here. You can see how well those tips are lined up there. So really, you don't want your hair to be sitting way back on the fly. You don't want it too short. It's kind of helps with the body, but also kind of acts as a, a, a mild uh, weed guard for this particular fly. So I'm gonna lay my tips just, just at the hook point here. I'm gonna pinch that. Make sure I pinch my Zelon also. My rubber leg will get in the way there. I'm gonna do one loose wrap. And then one nice and tight wrap. Make sure that everything's aligned there before you really crank anything else down. Do one more wrap there. Got this end sticking back here. I know it's gonna give me give me grief if I leave it there. Come on. Yeah, of course it's gonna give me grief, but that's okay. Hair will do that. It's one of the woes of tying. So I'm pulling some of these ends back as I go and just doing a wrap. Trying to keep those ends in the front so they're a little easier to trim. 
at the end of this. You can see there's some still some guard hairs in there, but I'm not really particular about that. A couple wraps up front. Now we're gonna grab most of the ends that we can here. Some of them are kind of stuck between the, the rubber legs back here, so I'm just gonna pluck those out as I find them. I think I got most of them now. So we'll grab all of those ends. I'm gonna trim about an eye's length right above my tie-in point. Can pull those guys back and we're gonna whip finish. Trying not to capture those rubber legs. One three turn, you could hit this with glue if you want to. I'm pretty, pretty confident in this power thread. You give it a good tug, it's not going anywhere. And lastly, We'll take our rubber legs, and as you can see, you've got three on either side here. So I'm just going to pull them down. I'm going to pinch those so I can just get a real easy pinch right at the bottom of all of them. Of course, they're going to give me grief too. And I want them about the length of the shank of the hook. Yeah, there's your bonefish bitter. Um, check us out on YouTube, Instagram, like, subscribe, and smash that notification button, and keep an eye out for the next time video. Thanks for watching.